All right, how you doing? This is Mr. Maestas here, and today I'm gonna to talk, I'm gonna do an example of a two proportion confidence interval. So uh, Super Bowl 50 is coming up in here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, I'm not exactly in the Bay Area, but I'm pretty close. Um, and, you know, I was wondering um, if there's a difference between females and males and what whether they watch the Super Bowl for the actual football game or for some other reason, maybe like um, the commercials or just going and eating the, the awesome food that they have at Super, Super Bowl parties. Uh, but basically, you know, do we watch it for the game or do we watch it for other reasons? And really, I want to know what the difference in percentage of males and female students that watch the Super Bowl for the game. So um, what I did was I took a poll here at my school and I did a randomly selected males and randomly selected females. And um, out of these 24 males, oops, what was going on with that? Sorry about that. Out of these uh, 24 randomly selected males, 14 of them said they watched the Super Bowl for the football game. And out of 47 females, 11 of them said they watched the football, the Super Bowl for the football game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a confident interval for the difference. So here are a couple of formulas that you're going to need to know, and these are on your formula sheet. So the standard error is uh, of, of the difference of two proportions is the same. It's very similar to the one when we did one proportion, right? We're, but we had P hat Q hat over N. Well, now we're just doing another one. So we're going to add P2, Q2 hat over N2. Um, and notice here that this is minus and this is plus, And that's because we have it under a square root. So we'll always have a plus in, in between there. And then our confidence interval is very similar to our previous confidence interval where we're taking our what we're looking for, which is the difference of two proportions, plus or minus our margin of error, which is Z star times our standard error. All right, so we're going to calculate it the same way we calculated our previous ones when we had one proportion confidence intervals. Oh, by the way, today in this example, I'm going to use a 95% confidence interval. So I'm going to go and calculate that out, show you how I do this, and then we, and then I'll put it in context. So the first thing we do whenever we're doing some sort of inference is that we need to do our conditions of inference. All right, so we're going to label our conditions. And, and the great thing is our conditions aren't very different from our one proportion. The first one is that we have a randomly selected students. So randomly selected students in each group. So this is the part that's different. We have two different groups that we are taking consideration about. So all of these conditions need to be for both groups. So two, um, 24 is less than 10% of all students, oops, of all male students. Again, we're doing two groups. My handwriting is just not that great on this thing. And 47 is less than 10% of all female students. Okay, so again, we're looking at two different groups. So we're going to do two of them for each of these. Now, the other thing that's very important for this, it's an additional, so this is the an additional thing that's different than the previous ones is that both groups are independent. Are independent of each other. Namely, we can't have somebody in both groups that took our poll. And, you know, we only have you know, these are obviously independent groups. There's no males that are in the female group, okay? So that was a new one. And our last one is NP and Q. So um, and we have to do it for both groups though, right? So N1, P1, this is the number of successes. And I can multiply, it's P hat one, sorry. I can multiply these, but I already have the number of successes here, 14 out of 24. So there are 14, which is definitely greater than 10. N2, Q2, or I'm sorry, N1, Q2, 
cute. You know what? Let me, before I go on, I'm going to put these in context here. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, N M P M hat. So I'm talking about males here. N M Q M hat. So uh, 14, then we have 10, which is greater than or equal to 10. N F P F hat. That was 11, which is greater than 10. And NF QF hat is 36, which is greater than or equal to 10. So these are the number of successes of the females, some number of um, non successes for the females, number of um, males that liked the football game, and then number of males that did not watch it for the football game. Okay, so now we have our conditions set, we have everything set. Now we can actually do our calculations. Okay, so I am going to uh, make this a bit smaller so I have some room here to work so we can still see the work here. All right, so the first thing I need to do here, notice I need to find my standard error so I can put it in my, mul my margin of error formula, okay? So we're gonna plug in our formulas here for R. Well, first of all, I need to know what P hat and Q hat are. So I'm gonna first find PM hat, and PM hat is my proportion of males that watch football um, for the uh, watch the Super Bowl for the football game, so that's 14 out of 24, which is 0.583, which makes QM hat 0 0.417, and uh, PF hat, which is the percentage of females that watch the Super Bowl for the football game, is 0.234, and which makes QF hat. 0.766. All right, so now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and do all these calculations. So I'm going to find the standard error of PM hat minus PF hat. And that's the square root of P1 hat, Q1 hat. So that's going to be 0 0.583 times 0 0.483. 417, I get that from these guys right here, divided by N1, N1, the number of people in my sample for each of these, um, there were 47 here, so it's divided by 24, plus PF hat times QF hat over 47. Okay, this will give me my standard error. So I calculate that out and I get about 0 0.1181. So now that I have my standard error, my Z star is the same as before. So since I'm doing 95%, my Z star for this is 1.96. It doesn't change. This is the same Z star. All right, P1 hat minus P2 hat. So I'm going to have, um, so I'm going to take my work over this way. P1 hat is, so I'm looking really at PM hat minus PF hat. Okay, the difference between the males and females. So that's going to be 0 0.583 minus 0 0.234, which is 0 0.349. Okay, so now I'm going to put it all together into this confidence interval formula. Okay. So let me scroll down a little bit so we have some more room to work. So I'm going to have 0 0.349 plus or minus Z star 1.96 times the standard error 0 0.1181. Now you can do all of this all at once in a string, but I just did it out in each step so you can see each step of the process. Okay. So when I multiply this out and I add it together, I'm going to get 0 0.1175 comma to 0 0.5805. All right, so that's my 95% confidence interval. So now the key, remember the important thing here is that we write this in context. So how do we write this in context? So students of mine, they see that word all over the place, literally in my classroom, context. Okay, so how do we write our conclusion in context? Well, let me go and write that down here for you. So here's our 
conclusion. I am 95% confident that the true proportion of males, male students that watch the Super Bowl for the football game is between 11.75% and 58.05% higher than the proportion of females that do. All right, so where did I get this word higher from? Why am I saying it's between 11.75 and 58% higher? It's because both of these are positive and the proportions of males came before females. So that means this proportion is bigger than this and they're both positive. So I'm 95% confident that the true proportion of male students that watch Super Bowl for the football game is somewhere between 11% higher and 58% higher than the proportion that females that, that do. If I would have had a negative here, then that would have mean, meant that the proportion of males was lower than the proportion of females by that percent. Okay, so here is a full confidence interval from start to finish. Finding my conditions, labeling all the things that I need, doing some math here, and then finally finding my confidence interval and putting it in context. Okay, so uh, if you're my student, tomorrow we'll get we'll come in class and we will uh, we'll practice a few more of these, and you'll get a chance to practice. So make sure you have this written down so you you're able to come back and look at the specific work that we did. All right, we'll talk to you soon, and those of you my students, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.